Welcome back to the GSMC Golf Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Garrison McDaniel. We just got we just got done finished talking about the Scotty Scheffler win at Muirfield Village, and now we're moving on to our second talk 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 topic there it is superlatives for the memorial but before we get into that if you want to help support the gsmc sports network in any ways it use the uh use the link gsmcpodcast.net for tips on donations it does help a lot goes a long way to support the creators here at the gsmc sports network we really appreciate every bit of support that we get from you guys but with all that being said we're going to get right into this second segment Superlatives for the Memorial. It was a fantastic week at the Memorial, but before we get into that, we do have to talk about the rest of the field and how they all did. Of course, it was Colin Markawa who takes sole second. He finished seven under, finished his last round at one under. He was three or he was two strokes back of Scotty Scheffler entering the final day, finishes one stroke back of him uh, after. <clears throat> Adam Hadwin was right there in contention. He was um he was four strokes back of Scotty Scheffler entering the day as everybody was kind of that far back of Scotty Scheffler, but he goes in final pairing and finishes four under two over on the day. Unfortunate for Adam Hadwin, fell off, looks a lot worse than it really was. Christian Bezadenhut had a very surprising uh very surprising tournament. We're gonna talk about him later in this segment as he does get one of the superlatives here. But he had a very impressive one. It's Matt Fitzpatrick, who really surged on in round four. Very consistent, 73, 70, 74, but a 69 on Sunday got him to tied for fifth with Ludwig Oberg and Seb Straka. Both of those players played very well, besides Seb Straka on uh, Sunday, finishing four over as at a 76 to uh, be that far back of um, Scotty Scheffler when he did have a chance going into the Sunday. Um, Hideki Matsuyama one under, Sujay M one under, Tony Finau one under, Xander Shoffley was rounds out the group of tied for eighth at one under. There were eleven players or eleven players in this field that were under par, and those are the eleven. And then you get into Nick Dunlap, who is having a very shocking year. Uh, the amateur that won on the one at the Century, I believe it was, to open this season. A very impressive win. Uh, he turned pro right after that and has had a very good year. And now he finished tied 12 at one of the best events in the world. Very impressive. Victor Perez tied 12. Sahitha Gala tied 12. Billy Horschel T15. Sam Burns T15. But the one that I really want to talk about is Victor Hovland. Because it looked so much like this was the tournament that he was going to break out this year after a fantastic 2023 season. It looked like he had it. And it, like this one was the one. But on round three, he finished. I mean, it was just a blow up on the back nine. 42 on the back nine uh, for 36 or there par 36 on the back nine. And he finishes with a 42. So goes six over after a one under on the round three one under on the front nine that would have put him at if he just kept to par with that one under that would have put him at seven under and eight under was the win this weekend he goes bogey 11 bogey 12 bogey 13 bogey 14 birdies 15 triple bogey 16 from an absolute blow up here on 16 you saw the frustration and they kept going back to him and they played out this whole a whole the whole hole basically and this is the par 316 where it's got the water in front of the green he drives it to the water he has to take the uh the second um penalty stroke and then you have he takes the second penalty stroke right into a bunker chips it far puts it close and then gets it in for the six and it's just so disappointing for victor hovland as he definitely had a shot at this one, he was one back of the lead. I think at at one point in this tournament, he had he was tied for first with Scotty Scheffler on um, Sunday or on Saturday, and then just an absolute blow up by him. And then on and, and and then in the round four, it's a seventy-five with two bogeys that finish out his day on sixteen and seventeen. I mean, he just. He got in his own head, and you really saw it. And and golf is a mental sport, and you really saw it with Victor Hovland this weekend how much it really can be. So disappointing results from Victor Hovland. Rory McIlroy was also tied for fifteenth 
as well as he finished two over. It was a 76 on um, Sunday for Rory McIlroy as well. Some bad scores on Sunday led to these guys playing a lot worse, or their scorecards being a lot worse than uh, you would have expected, but that's just how golf is. You got to perform on Sunday, and they didn't get it done. But for the superlatives, as we're talking about, I do have best driver, best irons, best wedge, best putter, most surprising, and most disappointing to hand out, as we always do. Best driver best driver this weekend goes to Seb Straka. This guy is a very accurate driver. He isn't a very far driver, but at the Memorial, it isn't about... Uh, it isn't about um, distance. It is about more accuracy at the Memorial as the OB is really bad. A lot of water in this uh, tournament. And so hitting fairways is so important. And Seb Straka hit fairways at an 85% accuracy clip. Around 60 is the tour average. And he hit six, or he hit 85% of his fairways this weekend. Very impressive from Seb Straka. He gained 0.673 strokes off the tee to the field. Very impressive. That was uh, that was top five strokes gained off the tee, and that was number one with accuracy. But I also want to talk about uh, Akshay Bhatia. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He was first in strokes gained off the tee at 1.033 above the field, but I did elect to go with Seb Straka because of the accuracy was just that much more of second place. He really was great this weekend when it came to hitting fairways, and you need to hit fairways. Next, it's going to be best irons, and I think you have to hand it out to the guy with the best irons in the game, the best golfer in the world. It's Scotty Scheffler, first in strokes gained approach, first in greens and regulation, first in proximity to hole. This is why he is the best golfer in the world we talk about so often, is he hits greens at an insane rate, and he always sticks it close to the hole. First in proximity to hole is very impressive, and strokes gained on approach being first is also very impressive at the memorial we talk about it being a accuracy competition a lot of the time and a putting competition and he was really great in both those aspects and that is why he came away as the winner here best wedges goes to hideki matsuyama his proximity to hole was five foot 11 inches from scrambling that is fifth and he was the best at scrambling percentage at an 81.25 percent of times converting on up and downs very impressive around the greens with your wedges that's what you need to do uh when you you know you get these very difficult greens being able to get up and down is so important so he was able to do it at a very impressive rate he finished uh in you know that group of only 11 guys to finish under par and that was the reason for it he didn't drive the ball well but he was very accurate around the green and that's really what got him to one under on the weekend so impressive stuff from Hideki Matsuyama when we came into this tournament wondering if he's really healthy he seemed healthy and he seems ready to go for the U.S. Open of course when that guy is on he is one of the best golfers in the world we saw it of course he has a green jacket he is a fantastic fantastic golfer when he is on and on his day he finished what tournament was that um uh, I think it was at Riviera earlier this year when he finished with a Sunday 62 to for the uh, win. And, you know, that's just what he does. He's a very impressive golfer, and he does great things when he's out on the golf course. So Hideki Matsuyama wedges best. He was first in scrambling. He was fifth in proximity to hole. So impressive stuff there. Best putter goes to Nick Dunlap. He was uh, He averaged 25 putts per round, which was first in the field. That's very impressive. He's not two putting very often, and he definitely is not three putting very often. He was third in strokes gained putting at 1.492, which is very, very impressive. On this, on this, on these greens that are so hard and so fast and very difficult to read, with the hole positions being where they were this weekend, he was fantastic. It was very impressive what Nick Dunlap was able to do. So he gets the best putter for this weekend. Most surprising was Christian Bezaden, who this is the superlative that he got that I kind of alluded to er, that I kind of alluded to earlier. It's Christian Bezaden who who has two top tens all year. And he was fourth in the Memorial this year at three under. He had a fantastic tournament. Very impressive rounds. 72, 67, 74, 72. So only one round over par here at the Memorial. And it is that Saturday. But playing very consistent. 
Uh, that 67 round two really pushed him over the edge here. And it's very impressive from Christian Bezadenhut. Most disappointing is Patrick Cantley. It's, there are a lot of guys that missed the cut here. Jordan Spieth, uh, uh, Will Zalatoris, I believe, missed the cut. Uh, I know um, Wyndham Clark missed the cut. Ricky Fowler missed the cut. Um, Kurt Kitayama missed the cut. But it's Patrick Cantlay, who is a two-time winner at Muirfield Village. He misses the cut here. Seven over. He is second only to Tiger Woods and lifetime earning at Muirfield Village. Again, missing the cut for that guy is so... I'm, most surprising in a bad way, but definitely most disappointing, Patrick Cantley. Um, but yeah, a lot of guys had a great weekends. Very impressive, of course, Scotty Scheffler. Um, he probably deserved to win every single award besides most disappointing, but I'm only going to give him one of them because that was the only one that he was absolutely the best at. Undisputed, first in greens and regulation, first in strokes gain on approach, first in proximity to hole. I mean, what are we doing? His irons are insane. Magic, what he's able to do with them. And very impressive. But that'll wrap it up for our second segment of the night. When I come back, we will be talking about Scotty Scheffler and his amazing year so far, how he is the official world golf number one by a lot. 